Hey, this is David. Today we're going to show you how to test and replace the heater assembly on your Electrolux electric dryer. If you're experiencing issues like your dryer not heating, getting an E64 error code, taking too long to dry clothes, it might be time to check or replace this part. Before we dive in, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more helpful appliance repair guides. Let's get started. With over 2 million products in stock and the know-how to help you do it yourself, we are AppliancePartsPros.com. Let's start by gathering the tools we'll need for today's troubleshooting. For this job, you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver or a square drive bit. I'm going to use a drill. It's easier and I don't want to mess up my manicure. You will need a multimeter, a flathead screwdriver, and a small 2 by 4 Also, please remember that safety comes first. Always make sure to unplug your electric dryer or turn the breaker off before you begin. With your tools ready and safety taken care of, we're all set to start pinpointing the issue with your dryer. Remove the two screws in the back that hold the top on, set it aside for now. Then unplug the two connectors on the control board that tie into the console. Up front, there's a screw on each side of the metal bracket holding the console in place. Take those out and set the whole console off to the side. Prop the dryer up with a two by four, tilt it back just enough to get underneath. Down at the very bottom, you'll find two screws. Get those out. Back up top again, pull the two screws from the upper corners of the front door panel. Gently swing the panel forward, unplug the door switch connector, and move the panel out of the way. Next, remove the two screws holding the control board plate to the front bulkhead. Then remove the last two screws holding the bulkhead. Lift the bulkhead straight up and off. Reach in and release the drum belt. Slide the drum out of there. The heater is on the left side. Start by removing the three silver wires hooked to the heating elements. Then disconnect the red wire or pink wires from the high limit thermostat. Now look for the 3 8 nut on the L2 side of the heater. Back that off and remove the wires. There'll be three screws holding the heater assembly to the front bracket. Take those out, and if there's a screw in the back of the housing, remove that as well. Once that's done, pull the whole heater housing out. To test the heater, grab your multimeter and set it to resistance mode. Now take one probe and hold it on the L2 terminal. With the other probe, touch each of the heating element terminals one at a time. Each element should show a resistance of around 27 ohms. Next, check for any grounding issues. Keep one probe on the element and touch the other to the metal case. You're looking for zero continuity here. If you get a reading, that means the element's grounded to the case and that's a problem. And here's a heads up. Don't rely on continuity mode alone for this test. It can fool you. If the element's grounded to the case, continuity will still beep, making it seem like the element's fine, even when it's not. If you'd like to know more about how to use a multimeter, I've put together a comprehensive tutorial for you, so check out the link in the description. Since we've confirmed the heating element is bad, let's replace it. Hit that like button if this saved you some guesswork. Here's the old heating element, and here's the new one. If you've already got one, great. If not, you can pick one up at AppliancePartsPros.com. Slide the heater housing back into place, lining it up with the mounting points. Secure it with the three front screws and the rear one if yours had it. Reconnect the L2 wire with a 3 8 inch nut. Then plug the red or pink wire back into the high limit thermostat. Finally, reattach the three silver wires to their heating element terminals. Now slide the drum back in, resting it on the rear rollers. Reach underneath, loop the belt around the motor pulley and idler, and make sure it's seated properly. This can be very difficult if you've never done it before. If you need to, go to the back panel and remove it. You'll have a better view of the pulley and the belt system. Lift the bulkhead back into position and set it down into the mounts. Reinstall the two top screws to secure it. 
Up top again, secure the control board plate back to the bulkhead with its two screws. Grab the front panel and reach down to plug the connector back in and swing it back into place. Run in the two screws at the top corners. Tilt the dryer back and using the two befores, reinstall those two bottom screws near the base. Then line up the console and reinstall its bracket screws. Reconnect the two console wires to the control board. Now drop the top panel into place by sliding it forward, then fasten it down with the two rear screws. Turn the power back on at the breaker or plug the unit in. That's how you knock out a heater assembly replacement on an Electrolux electric dryer. Hopefully this walkthrough made things a little easier. If you've run into any weird issues or found a trick that helped, drop it in the comments. Always good to hear from each other. Need a replacement part? Head on to AppliancePartsPros.com, punch in your model number, and you'll have it in a couple of days. Most ship fast. Thanks for sticking with us, and we'll see you on the next one.